on you guys in today's video you're gonna see Dimitri and I go over testing the code for the C55 and making sure that we will be able to configure it as a manual transmission and that it starts without the shift control module and the TCU plugged in so that basically is replicating what it will be like once we swap in the manual and have the shifter disconnected and the TCU disconnected. You guys will see, and then I will talk to you guys after we get done with that and update you guys with other stuff that has been going on. All right, guys, here with Dimitri, we are uh, testing out the car. Hello, Dimitri. Hey. Uh, testing out the car um, with the TCU and most importantly, the shifter unplugged. Yep. Uh, we actually started it with just the TCU unplugged, so you have to disconnect the shifter to actually not be able to start the car. And now we'll show you that. So it will not turn over. So what we're going to do is we're going to test out the coating to make sure the car can start even with both of these uh, unplugged. So it's kind of replicating um, not having the automatic in, correct? Yep. Okay. That's exactly. Cool. So we're going to ME 2.8, your keys 2.81. Okay, so we can check that we can successfully read your ECU. Yep, 2.8 AMG. All right, that's good. Okay, so here's the secret. You're going to control unit adaptations, mm. variant coding. All right. Uh, display of coding data. So first we're gonna check what's your current coding is 203 E55 engine. It's not E55 mm -hmm. car, it's E55 mm -hmm. engine, right? So ETC electronic transmission control unit, heated electronic uh, shifter module heated, right? So mm -hmm. those two things. Um, it's not really necessary to disable them, but you're gonna get um, ESP error okay. if you don't you disable don't. them. Then we go into the most interesting part, and that's transmission. transmission. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's it. Next, we go into uh, coding according to data plan. Mm. Plan data. Plan data. Yeah. Okay, whatever it means. So that's the important part. Yeah. Okay. So we need to be sure that we remember those parts. So, and uh, since I know what to change, we just need to replace that with zero. Those are hex keys you were talking about before? Yep. Yeah. Okay, it's resetting the ECU. Okay. Now I, I, I'm nervous to be honest. Okay. Yeah, we need to be sure that. Do, 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 do. How about that? Ha! Huh. Look at that. Manual transmission. Manual transmission. Okay. Uh, and now what we're gonna try to do? Sorry. Let's exit to the initial mask. Let's try to start your car. Okay. Hopefully we still can park. I need to press <laughs> clutch just in case. That's funny. Man. No way. Huh? <laughs> That's crazy. So still you you can show that this guy Everything's is Everything's unplugged, yep. yep. Car is working. Okay, now what we can do, we can check for errors. I mean, we're not supposed to have any errors. Yeah. No thought codes. Yep. Nice. So let's check the helmet memory just in case. One, two, to a zero, and turn to a manual. <laughs> two, 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 zero. Two, two, zero, yeah. 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 So, 
she is saying that there is like a uh, communication problem with ETC and uh, uh, electronic ETC transmission That's... unit and so, uh, shifter module. Mm. So if we go, for example, Okay, let's go control unit adaptation. Uh, correct everything coding. And by the way, you saw that it's like it was like stored and card there, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So it's in it means that we still have this problem, but if we go here, doo -doo -doo, six E it should be, if I remember correctly, 68. Good. Display of coding data. So wrong one. Mm. Oh, that one we were trying to change was to get yeah. those to, to disable. All right, so there you guys saw it. We were able to start the car without the shifter or the TCU uh, plugged in just by replicating um, the manual transmission code. Literally just one hex number um, was changed. And what that represents basically uh, is like a zero, one, or two option. Mercedes had uh, manuals, automatics, and they also had sequentials. Uh, I didn't know that they had sequentials from factory, but uh, it turns out they actually did. Um, so those numbers represent those different options. And then the second number in that was actually for the uh, speed limiter, top speed limiter. The other one that we were trying that you guys saw um, that wasn't working was changing the other value to basically established that the shift control module or i think it's electronic shifter module and the transmission control module uh, are not fitted on the cars now for whatever reason my car wouldn't save the code for that um it would it would run it and it would program it but then as soon as we hopped out to check if it was actually changing um in the coding um, it wasn't. It was going back to saying that it was fitted and it should say not fitted if it was uh, working how it should have been. So that's not the biggest deal in the world. Um, but maybe we'll be able to find a solution for that. But the biggest thing that we accomplish is knowing that it will start without those things um, established or without those things connected. Um, and then basically the plan is once I do the swap, um, I'll keep the uh, electronic shift shifter module or controller, whatever to call it. Um, I'll keep it in park and then I'll still be able to drive with the manual. And then I'm going to head over to Dimitri's house. We'll do the manual configuration. So the car will think it's manual transmission. We'll get rid of the um, uh, shift position indicator on the um, or gear indicator on the cluster. And besides that, um, that's about it. And then we'll we'll try to figure out a solution to get these things totally not fitted so that I can have them unplugged and not have to worry about them. Um, one other benefit, I guess, of going with the manual is not having to worry about the transmission control module uh, getting that moisture wicking up from the transmission fluid. Crazy that, you know, I just happen to check it and I've checked it like twice since I've owned the car um because i know that's the issue of how the transmission fluid leaks from that plug connector and it uh gravity and everything else kind of pulls it up uh with the with the fluid kind of going over the wires there's, there's a word for how fluid goes up like that but anyways um yeah mine actually had some fluid on the wiring and a little bit on top of the module and i was pretty surprised because that plug that i put in is not that old um so I'm, I'm leaving the, the TCM out right now, just exposed so I can keep an eye on it until we do this. 
Um, I cleaned it out with some map cleaner and it's all good and ran fine. It wasn't actually in the module or in the uh, connectors, but still, that's like kind of annoying that it would do that. And I think I changed the transmission fluid like maybe 15,000 miles ago. So for a, a plug to go bad that quick is just kind of annoying and unnecessary. So um, yeah, that's, that's one benefit again to going manual. It's just less complicated. Um, other updates, uh, the drive shaft from the crossfire, we're not sure that it is going to work. So what I ended up doing is actually ordering one from a W203, uh, the part number ending in 5506. I'll pop it up on screen. Um, but, uh, that one we got in touch with, well, Dimitri got in touch with another guy that did a W209 C CLK 55 manual swap and he used a w203 c320 front half a drive shaft so that one should work for me because the clk 55 um, drive shaft and the c55 drive shaft should be the same uh, for the most part fingers crossed so uh, the part numbers are different but what we've learned from all this experiment and hopefully you guys understand this as well even if part numbers are different, that does not necessarily mean the part are actually different themselves. So um, even if the drive shaft part numbers are different, they might still align perfectly fine and they might have the same length and whatever, but they might have different, you know, design features. Like for instance, the one I ordered, it has a bit of a flare to the middle of the tube. Um, and the one Dimitri used and the other guy uses from a C320 and it does not have the flare from the tube. Uh, but they're the same part number and they're the same length, but just different designs. They have the same flanges, which is the most important. We need the smaller flange to mate with the crossfire transmission. So, um, yeah, all in all, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, all of the uh, nuts and bolts and hardware have showed up. Uh, Dimitri was kind enough to lend me uh, a bunch of little tools that are going to help just facilitate the swap that much easier. Um, he even gave me a, a rear main seal just in case I end up doing it. So shout out to Dimitri once again. He's been pivotal in all this progress and me being able to do this as quick as I've been able to, uh, because he spent, you know, six months doing this before, just researching before. So, uh, because of his knowledge and the other people that I've been able to connect with, uh, I've been able to like expedite this process, um, by a big amount. So yeah, shout out to Dimitri and everybody else that's that's reached out or helped or connected in some way. Um, I like I like that about Dimitri and about the others is that I'm the same way. I just want to be an open source of knowledge. Like I'm not trying to gain any profit off of anything. Like I like that the YouTube channel is growing just for a community aspect, but I don't care to make money off this channel. That's not my goal for it. It's just my goal to like make the platforms more known and more accessible. Um, for connection purposes like not for any type of gain or anything like that so yeah that's why i'm doing this i'm an open source type of person that's my beliefs it's my philosophy i think that helps uh things um rapidly grow and uh have a chance at you know doing things that weren't done before so um yeah i'm really thankful that those guys are like that as well Waiting on a few other parts to show up like we need the hardline clips and uh, I don't know if I took a video of that, but the actual shift rod like Connector from the transmission that connects to the little bracket on the side the actual rod I didn't notice before but it's actually broken in half So I ordered a new bracket. You can't just order the rod You have to order the bracket with it and it all comes as one piece So I just ordered a new one of those so that should be getting overnighted um, with the hardline clips once they get in from Germany um, So hopefully fingers crossed If all this stuff is here by the end of next week uh, I can start the swap like Labor Day weekend and hopefully Be driving out of the garage with a manual transmission by Monday um, So fingers crossed We have everything else like we've narrowed out so many like bugs and so many things we've we've ironed out a lot of those things so I'm hoping that we're ready to go very soon once we get those last couple parts. For the most part, all this stuff is here. So we're ready to go. I just wanted to at least post this quick video to give you guys an update. 
show you guys the coding because that's rarely shown on YouTube and Dimitri was cool with it as well. He might post uh, clips of that on his YouTube channel as well. So yeah, we were both super excited as you can see in the video and uh, we're both super excited to actually get this done. Um, yeah, so I'm pumped. Hope you guys are pumped. Thank you guys to all the newcomers that have joined. We are like five subscribers away from 200 subscribers. So yeah, uh, making progress and um, most importantly, progress with this build has gone pretty fast. Like with all things considered, with the world slowed down, everything's still gone pretty fast. So um, yeah, stay tuned, like, comment, subscribe. I always try to respond to you guys. I always try to conversate. That's the purpose of this channel is to connect, community, help, open source, get things done, do new things, you know, build this platform. So that's why I do it. And uh, yeah, appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.